All right, rigging is the secret superpower behind Character Animator. So let's jump back into that Magnus project and talk about rigging hierarchy, tags, and behaviors. All right, so when a Character Animator puppet works well or doesn't work at all, it's usually because of rigging. So let's talk about it. If I cruise over to the project panel and I select Magnus, I'm gonna go ahead and launch the edit original button here. And that is gonna open up Illustrator and reveal the layer structure for Magnus here. If you don't see a layers panel, just cruise on up to window and go to layers. Okay, so a little bit of anatomy. Magnus here is made up of a head and body. So this is considered the parent object and these are children of that parent. Inside of the head, I have other child objects of this parent object. All of that is called hierarchy. Each of these layers within the hierarchy is tagged or named, yeah, different body parts. And the idea with Character Animator is to label these body parts correctly so that Animator knows how to animate them. There are some, like head and body, that are required. Those are a bare minimum for Character Animator. And there are some that have very specific behaviors or effects that are associated with them. So things like eyes, or maybe a mouth, or maybe eyebrows. You don't have to use all of the body parts that are possible, but you do have to have those bare minimum. The other thing to note about tagging is that you can actually add a little plus sign in Illustrator or in Photoshop when you're building up your characters and that's going to actually create an independent object in Character Animator. So what does that mean? Let me hop on over and take a look. So we're back in Character Animator and I'm going to go to Rig. Okay. So now that we understand how these all got their names and sort of the general basic layer structure, notice how everything that used to have a plus sign next to it now has a crown. A crowned object basically means it's independent. This doesn't mean it's floating freely about. It's still going to be attached to the parent object, but might be allowed to move, let's say, up and down in case of an eyebrow or left and right if it's an eyeball. So still attached to the parent object, but has some freedom of animation within the parent object. Okay, when we're talking about tagging, it is good to know that there is a sort of fallback option. And that is over here in the tags panel. So in the event that you accidentally, you know, misspell the left eye, it's probably better to go back and just change the name, but you could also cruise over here and actually tag it. So if you tag something the wrong way or wanted to maybe have a combination of tags, you can actually do that in the tags panel. All right, now that we understand layer hierarchy and parent objects and child objects and layer tags and independent tags, it's time to talk about behaviors for just a little bit. So for example, if I click the head layer here, notice that if I cruise over to its tag, it actually says that eye gaze and face are associated behaviors with that object. So it's pre-built into that. Uh, things like eyebrows will also have certain behaviors or animation effects linked to that. So it's doing a lot of the heavy lifting for you. In addition to these behaviors that are automatically associated with specific tags, it's important to note that Character Animator also comes with a range of advanced behaviors that you can add to your puppet. Okay. So now that you understand the basics of rigging, including hierarchy, tags, and behaviors, it's time to work with a customizable character that you can make all your own.